the so when we talk about probability in mathematical sense that is like i am defining something called as a probability space here but probably uh, you will probably never come across this term that is you can in fact go and solve any probability problem without even coming ac across this term so uh, just to be mathematically complete uh, what we mean is i define a probability space as a as a uh, as a set s of things that can happen and a rule which assigns uh, let's say w happens let i have a set s of things that can happen and let w be an element in that set i have an i have a rule pr or p which assigns a real number to w that is p is a function which assigns a real number to w and also uh, it is non negative and sum of all that is summation w belonging to s pr should be equal to 1 uh, such a system or such a such a triplet is called as a probability space which just just to be mathematically complete as in uh, uh, yeah just go to the next slide all right uh, so before i get, go into bayes theorem ju just because uh, there are someone some people who do not who are not so familiar with probability so idea really is that uh, you conduct a conduct uh, an experiment which that is you conduct a imaginary experiment and you and you that is you try to understand what are the possible outcomes that can come and what are your favorable outcomes for example a very very basic example would be let's say uh, uh, i am uh, uh, i am the captain of my team and I, I i just call for heads and so what is the probability of me winning it's 1 by 2 because the outcomes are 2 and my favorable count is 1 so uh, so and one key point to understand is that the experiment is fictitious that is uh, it's something like the physicists trying to determine the temperature at the center of the earth center of the sun they don't really go to the center of the sun and measure it they just do calculations and <laughs> measure it so uh, the idea is the uh, so the key of the key things that you must notice that you must somehow in your solution enumerate all states and you must have some method to identify favorable states yeah <coughs> all right uh, so uh, i mean this is there in even our high school course in probability that is bayes theorem is uh, kind of defines the prob so for example i i'll first define the formula and then i'll tell what it means probability of a given an event b is probability of b given an event a uh, into probability of a by probability of b what this means okay for example i i can okay i have given a take home problem which is from this okay how many of you know of serata of online judge all right uh, i could write down the link here if it, i hope it's visible in the for the last bench this is serata of online judge they have a very nice collection of questions uh, the number of questions are fairly small but then they uh, it is also very tricky and uh, and very well known for the level of problems that are there on this on this jet so you could tr uh, check uh, this problem number 508 when you have time the pro the uh, i'll just tell a very simplified version of the problem because uh, just to explain bayes theorem in which so you have a bag in which you have some black balls and some white balls you do not know how many white balls you have or how many black balls you have now assume you you pick l balls from this bag yeah you you know the total count of the number of balls you have in this bag assume you pick l balls from this bag assume you are given that uh, assume you pick l balls and you uh, you know that l1 out of them turns to be black and l2 turns to be white given this information what what is the probability that let no, let's say number of black balls is 2 that is i am given the probability i am given that i have l1 black balls after picking l balls l equal to l1 plus l2 i am given that after picking l balls i l1 turn out to be black and l2 turn out to be white and i ask for assuming this event has occurred what is the probability that the bag contained 10 balls now note that assuming that is in our normal logic first means if we go by our normal logic first the first bag has some number of balls and then this event occurs so what i am asking is assume this event has occurred what is the probability that the bag has 
let's say b is equal to two balls so uh, you can solve it using bayes theorem uh, that is you can solve it using a formula like this in which in, in which a would be the probability of uh, okay uh, I, I just i think because i've used a okay a would be the probability that i have the given number of black balls b would be the event that occurred which is i have l1 black balls and l2 white balls i i have that is l1 black balls and l2 white balls come out from uh, from my bag where i can where the reverse probability can be computed as p of b given a which is which is easy, easily computed because that is how it is that is the normal way of thinking so this is this is, uh, in fact this is equal to okay uh, so this is basically you could pr probably try out this problem it's a fairly so the easiest problem of a contest uh, and other problems were fairly hard uh, the contest was uh, petrov mitrishev's contest this time so uh, uh, when you have time you could probably try problems from these russian judges because they are uh, very well known for their uh, class and uh, how hard uh, it is uh, means they really emphasize on concepts so you could probably try it out when we have free time but unfortunately we are not able to integrate these judges onto our uh, our sports contest so our evaluation of the success of the camp or, or how well you are performing would be based on the problems you solve on spot. But again, you could try these problems just to get familiar with these concepts. So you could just look at these problems. All right, so this is one thing which is probably a bit extension, uh, which is probably something you did not learn in high school. Uh, so we define something called as a random variable. Now, although it's called as a random variable, it's actually a function which takes a, an element from this set, which set of outcomes, and assigns. So, okay, I'll probably give the right definition. A function which is defined on the el elementary events of the space. And, for example, if I say, if I uh, roll two dice one possible random variable i can have is sum of the uh, numbers on the faces pointing upwards which is a random variable which which uh, so uh, let's say the event is let's say the faces pointing upwards is something like this then for this event and let my random variable be x x x of this event would be uh, 5 so we define uh, a concept called as a random variable which is actually a function and we say that and now we define the probability of the random variable we'll say that what is the probability that uh, the sum of the uh, sum of the count of the of the phases up is x so what we should have essentially written as probability of x of w equal to x where w is an element but just for simplicity because almost always we'll be working with one probability space uh, i ha at least I, I have not had a problem where i was working with two completely independent prob probability space maybe in advanced math but uh, that is f as far as my programming experience goes you're mostly working with one probability space so you can you can completely remove writing this of w and you can just write it like this for simplicity so if x and y okay uh, before i go into independence of random variables so we have a concept of events let's say an event even would be the probability of me walking from here to there and even e2 would be probability of goro walking from here to there so we say that two events are independent if my, my my walking or not walking does not in any way affect his walking or not walking so uh, i think i missed that uh, point so probability of e1 and e2 for two independent events would be probability of e1 into probability of e2 so uh, in case x and y are two random variables and uh, the probability of x probability of the uh, random variable assuming a value x and probability of random variable y assuming a value y would be would be the product of individual probabilities if the variables are independent so uh, that is or you can say that x and y are independent if this pro if this relationship holds uh, so 
uh, for most of the things there are three ways in which you dis uh, in which you define measures of central dispersion you can say mean you can say median or you can say mode so how would you define the same for random variables a mean of random variable is what we mostly use in programming context as called as expectation which is sum of x into probability that the random variable takes the value x this is what you'll use mostly uh, unless you're using basic probability you'll be mostly using only expectation so but you can also define median and mode as probability that the random variable is less than or equal uh, the median median is called is small x if the probability that the random variable is less than or equal to x is greater than 0.5 and greater than or equal to x is greater than 0.5 so in an array median is the middle term so if you kind of define it on this continuous space this becomes the median and same with mode mode is in an array a mode would be something which occurs most frequently so an analogous definition in f for probability for random variables would be probability that x equal to x this is small x i'm sorry about that this is greater than or equal to probability is x is equal to x dash for every other x dash so uh, any doubts <laughs> i don't think I'll, i've just been saying definition so still any doubts all right so next one okay uh, the important concept about expectation is that uh, is the linearity of expectation so uh, let us assume that i want to find the expected value of let's call this function as f i want to find the expected value of what would three times the dice three times the number that appears as some b intuitively and also as a property you can prove that three times the expected value that occurs is that is expectation of three times the sum is a into e of x same when you add a constant and similarly if you have two random variables expectation of uh, a x plus b y is you can just remove the that is this property is called a linearity of expectation and this would work even when x and y are not independent if it is a sum right so that essentially covers the theory of probability uh, we'll now look at some problems in, pro in probability so uh, this is a problem from uh, top code as rm466 the problem states that you have a rectangular uh, lottery is a rectangular grid which is n cross 5 you have numbers from 1 to 5n written on written on this cell that so that each number occurs exactly once so now the uh, uh, okay uh, i hope you all can read the statement Okay, I, I, I'll probably give you some time to read the statement before I go further. So, uh, everyone clear with what the problem is asking? Right, so, can, okay, so can anyone just formulate, because we have a lot of time, I think we can take a gradual approach. So, can anyone just de, uh, say the problem to me, that is, can anyone just describe the problem, what is asked? Right, uh, I'll just say what the problem, say, problem statement asks for. A lottery is defined as an n cross phi grid in which every element is distinct. So, uh, essentially, you will have each each element from one to five n occurring once in this lottery. Now, the lottery organizers uh, randomly choose yeah. the lottery organizers randomly choose five distinct integers in this range. And what we must find is, let's say, I I have I have one lottery. What, what is the probability of me winning the lottery? That is. Uh, yeah, uh, the winning winning is defined as if at least one row out of these n rows, let's say that the numbers chosen are one, two, three, four, five. So uh, if my third second third row has three, two, one here, then I have that means I have won this lottery. If it's greater than three, for example, it's great if I have all the five terms, but if I have at least three terms in any row, I have that essentially means that I have a winning lottery. So what we must output is the probability that the a given ticket is a winning ticket uh, or uh, yeah a, any possible approaches on how we would go about solving this problem yeah so uh, first of all uh, we uh, for the answer uh, it can be any of the rows so we will not write the rows because that will not depend on the numbers in the ticket mm -hmm. so for uh, just calculate for one row and multiplying the 10 so the answer for one row can be say out of the five numbers three can be uh, matching with the lottery, so 5C, uh, 5C3 into 5N minus 5 by uh, C2 divided okay. by 5N minus uh, 5NC by okay. plus for 4 and uh, 5 you can do and this is for 1 row. So wow. because it is like for all the end rows you can multiply with it. 
All right. So, uh, okay. Uh, I'm not sure if it depends on the numbers given in the lottery ticket. I mean. All right. I mean, I get what you're saying, and you're pretty close to the solution. So, uh, what she says is that uh, assuming that the numbers are fixed, uh, the solution would be it is not dependent on the on which row 